You know, self-improvement gurus say you should have no regrets. You know, that everything you've done has made you the person you are today. I must confess, however, as I look back on my career, there are probably things I should have done differently. We're here to throw you a life preserver and remind you that you're not alone. I'm Doug Kaufman with Shop Owner Magazine. Welcome to SOS Shop Owner Solutions. We're exploring some of the nightmares today's shop owners face. We'll talk about those 3 a.m. panics, the things that either wake you up or keep you from falling asleep in the first place. This episode has been brought to us by 360 Payments, the automotive industry's leading credit card processor. 360 Payments makes payments simple, secure, and streamlined for auto shops through seamless integration with dozens of shop management software and DVI tools. 360 Payments offers solutions for in-person and remote payments, including text-to-pay, which lets your customer pay from their smartphone when it's convenient for them. Visit 360payments.com slash podcast to learn more. With us today is Brian Rex from Fleet Services in Everett, Washington, and Tyson Anderson from Master Mechanic in Providence, Utah. Also with me today is Vic Tarasik from Shop Owner Coach. Vic, as a coach and a mentor, I'm proud to know you as the shining example of perfection that you are. How to be a success. I mean, it's just oozes from you. (laughs) There's nothing you would have done differently in your past, is there? Not at all. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I'm I'm the antithesis of the shiny example of success and perfection. I am a, a, a guy that goes... Boy, am I glad I'm not younger anymore. But I've learned a lot over the years, and I'm proud to say that the you know that the two gentlemen that are with us today, Brian and Tyson, I've known for a while. Brian, I've known for a long time, and Brian, in our early years, we thought we knew a lot, didn't we? You know, we all thought we were Superman until we're not. You know, we can do anything, fix anything, go 24-7. Nothing affects us until we find out that we're actually human and we can't do everything. So over the years, we've gained a little bit of insight. We were kind of like that technician who's a legend in his own mind. We know he is, but he doesn't. We were legends in our own mind, and we didn't know it. What would you say to yourself today if you met yourself in 2006 when you and I met? You know, I I think that the one thing that I've learned is to actually um, shut my mouth and open my ears. Um, There are a lot of people out there that are smarter than me. Um, that have a good understanding of business and principles and morals and integrity that I thought I knew, Mm -hmm. but I had no clue as to how the real world worked, uh, especially related to business. Um, Just simply stopping and listening was the key factor for me. So here's the challenge. When I met you in Colorado in 2006 at our first group meeting, we both had that overconfidence. How do you get past that? Well, I think when you get kicked in the teeth uh, and you realize that, you know, you thought you were actually making money, being productive, taking care of the customer uh, and then you realize that you know when you're working 18 hours a day seven days a week that's not really making money right. that you know you're not giving yourself any kind of a life and uh, I think when you finally realize that you can't do it all and you need to just step back and actually find help uh, talk to people, um, find a mentor, uh, somebody that can teach you. And it doesn't necessarily have to be businessy things. 
it can be just life experience that makes a huge difference. And, uh, you know, we've all lived those, those experiences, but actually helping the younger generation not make the same mistakes that I've made. (laughs) And I trust me, I've made more than the average person. So uh, I'm with you. So Tyson, as a young shop owner, this getting kicked in the teeth thing sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. have a few of those. (laughs) Well, tell us about your working relationship with Brian. Um, I joined the group and actually purchased the shop. I was a technician here before um, I became the owner. I purchased the shop and joined the group. um, And that's where I met Brian. Um, And then over the years, we kind of, we were composite partners and we became pretty close friends and he's become a good mentor. And um, anytime I need help, he's always there to give me his advice and help, help me in any way he can. So, Can you point out some examples of things that as a younger, uh, as a younger shop owner, you maybe thought were one thing and through Brian's uh, Brian's help you've realized or, or something different? Yeah, um, I've learned that um, you really gotta, you gotta learn how to be a leader and um, really communicate well with your, your team, your employees. Um, it's one thing I struggled with at the beginning and um, got some help from Brian and some advice on how to, how to kind of rekindle that um, communication and kind of get everyone refocused on the goals. Um, another aspect that's helped a lot is um, with Brian having so much more experience than me, I can come to him with questions or let him know kind of what's going on in the shop. And he can see patterns that I probably don't see because he's been doing it long enough. And he can, you know, warn me to watch out for some and um, such as accounts receivables and making sure, you know, you know, get to cash for. As a former right. technician who bought the shop, were there were the things that you had to change with your relationship uh, with your, uh, your 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 employees, formerly maybe your coworkers? Yeah, um, it definitely changed everything. Um, even the people that you thought were, you know didn't have a problem with it. Some people had a problem with it, but um, basically I think that's when we went through the most turnover is right after that. Um, You know, not that, well, I have a different way that I wanted to run the shop than the previous owner. So, you know, we took and changed the whole direction of the company. to, I wanted to be more, you know, customer satisfaction oriented, a little more um, top notch. And so, kind of the changes at first were kind of drastic, and we went through and pretty much replaced just about everyone, I think, that was under the original ownership. But so, so Tyson, before you. Yeah. Uh, reached out to Brian. Did you have to hit a wall, or did you just to come? Did this just evolve as part of the relationship? So, as part of buying the shop from the previous owner, he was in the group, um, and that was part of our agreement. As I stay in the group, um, so that was a good, you know, caveat that he put in there. Um, and then when I met Brian, it was his composite partner. Um, I was struggling to get, well, just 
basically was having timing issues, cash flow issues, um, just things weren't going so smooth. And so um, Brian and Casey McGowan um, came out to my shop for a few days and kind of watched and made some recommendations and made some changes. And that was about seven years ago. Tyson, it sounds like your biggest challenges may have been on a management basis. Did you have to adjust your kind of your personality, the way, you know, do you have to train yourself uh, to to be this, uh, you know, in this management uh, yeah, scope? Definitely. Um, when I, I'm, I've always kind of been an introvert, not kind of, you know, always kind of quiet. Um, so when I bought the shop, um, I got some good advice to join a public speaking um, group. I think it might have actually been Vic that recommended that I go to Toastmasters. Yeah. yeah. So did that, um, read lots of books on leadership, and, um, and then going to the meetings and seeing other people, you know, other good leaders, how they do things. Um, made a big difference. I think one of the key things that we, you know, that when I first met Tyson and when Casey and I came down and spent spent some time with him at his shop was we we established his values. You know, uh, he, he was not the previous owner. And so we needed to find what made Tyson tick, what was important to Tyson, how he wanted to run his business and you know, and make it his, not the previous owners. What are the things that Tyson wanted to see out of his business? What was his mission? What are his values? And, uh, you know, those were the things that I think were probably the, the, the key starting off point for Tyson was to establish that. And, you know, when he says that he went through his crew and started over, that was the the reason he did that was because of those people were from the old regime and they wouldn't conform to his values. And he had elevated those values quite a bit from where they were. And that's the, you know, um, he was after customer satisfaction. He was act after a you know a, a, a next to nothing comeback ratio. Um, he wanted that honesty, the integrity, and those kind of things, those kind of values. And the people he had in place were not that kind of a personnel. And by you know helping him to set his bar higher than what the previous owner did that was able to help him to get to the point and say okay yeah these people don't have the same values that i have they don't care about the customer as much as i do so that's why they have to go and you know once you once you can put that line in the sand it makes a lot of things easier you started the idea or, or got the idea that you were ready to be a shop owner did you have expectations of how easy it would be or man i could do this uh you know how, how did that uh, how did that change when you actually took over the, the the role uh so yeah it definitely was a lot different than i expected um i figured things would pretty much be a smooth transition and um i always knew I wanted to own a shop. And so as a technician, I, you know, would always put money away and save and um, finally, like, the circumstances were right for me to buy the, the shop from the previous owner. And um, we did that and it was 
It was an eye opener. Um, you, you know, you think of working for yourself as being easier and having less stress, but now you're not just working for yourself, you're working for your whole team. And so many more people rely on you than, you know, just going in and fixing cars. So. And Brian, how did you uh, help him uh, get past that uh, to realize that there's more to it than, than just working for yourself? Well, I think mostly it was just conversation. Um, him calling me, me calling him, uh, just talking through these situations. And I think one of the things that, that Tyson have a, and I have a pretty good rapport on is, is that, you know, he can come to me with a problem or a situation. Um, and I don't ask him or I don't tell him how to fix it. Um, I expect him to have a couple of answers how would you fix this tyson what would you what what do you think is the right way to fix this or to handle this situation and he usually has one or two situations or or or, or answers that he feels will work in that situation and then i give him my input so i'm not i'm not asking him to or he is not asking me to tell him what to do he is bouncing ideas off of me I am giving my input. He has a solution. I tell him how I would handle things, and that gives him a, a, a better baseline to be able to make make a valid decision because he has facts from another input that he can make that choice. And that's okay. probably the, the the best thing that we've been doing is just just talking, just to, you know, friend to friend, person to person, mentor to to mentor type person, and, and it works. It's a relationship, what you're saying. Correct. So, Brian, you shared with me a long time ago about your mentor. And yep. I, and who, who walked you through a lot. Share a little bit about what he did for you. And then after that, why is it you're doing this with Tyson? Daryl was, was my mentor. Um, he was a very faith-based person. He was more of a person that would give the shirt off its back to a person or a customer than anything else. Um, he was just into the customer service side of things. He figured the money would come. And that was the first thing that he told me when was that, hey, I am a horrible business person. You need to find somebody that can help you with the business side of things. And that's when I got involved with the with the bottom line impact group and and uh, and got involved with that. And that's where I met you, Vic. At so, um, and what I was able to do is, you know, I wanted to have that mentality that says, yes, I am going to be a giving person. I am going to give back to my community. I am going to help people. I'm going to help the people at the church if they need it and so on. Um, whenever I can, whenever I can afford it and do whatever I can do. But I also need to take care of my family, the people that work for me, health insurance, all, you know, decent wages, all of the above. So I had to be a person that actually made money on an invoice. You can't just give everything away. And so uh, that's where the big thing was for me is how do I become a business person? And going from a technician to a businessman is a huge step. It's a, it's a, it is a huge learning curve. Huge learning curve. Huge learning curve. Yep. You, you have, and, and I will, I say this from shop corners that I work with and myself, you know, working with Brian, you've got to get out of the shop. You can't spend time out in the shop in order in running your business you have got to remove yourself as tyson has and to and run the business really work on yourself more than anything right Brian? seller's remorse is horrible as an owner you know uh, you know i i look back and think what a water pump cost when i first started this business and now i don't even want to know what it 
what it costs, you know, and, and the labor to do it, you know, it, it, things have changed so much. And, and, you know, I, I look back and think, well, you know, a water pump costs this, so we can do it for this. And it's like, well, yeah, that doesn't even cover wages anymore. So, no. you know, I had to get off the counter. Seller's remorse is, is the worst. Tyson, what has been the the biggest challenge that you've faced? Has it been the financial aspect of running a shop? Um, that's up there at the top. I think number one is um, finding the right team, um, finding the right service writers, especially. As a technician, I know kind of what to look for in a technician but I underestimated the difficulty and the, the skills required to be a service advisor. Um, I'm not a good service advisor, and so I needed to figure out how to hire someone who was smarter than me in that area. Um, that was definitely a challenge. Still some that, you know, is ongoing and we try to figure out. And, um, but it's been nice to be able to, you know, talk to Brian and, you know, he tells you, you know, you got to get off the counter, you know, because I'll do the same thing. I'll, you know, think, well, what, how cheap can I do this for? And, you know, at the time you don't realize that you're actually hurting your business. And so mm -hmm. it's good to get off the counter and, you know, find people who will, who, who can be honest um, and represent, you know, all of our values. You know, that's one thing about a service advisor. They're kind of the face of the company. Um, and so they've got to represent, got to have pretty high standards for them. Right. So I, I know that, I know the, I know Brian's answer to this accountability does it feel comfortable when you're being held accountable sometimes it's good uh that's really how you know it's all about being humble enough to accept the um criticism or the critique and making the change mm -hmm. um sometimes it's not fun to hear but you have to hear it and then you have to make a decision and act on it. Um, it's a, it's a journey. Indecisiveness will kill your business. Yes, it will. So, yeah. This episode has been brought to us by 360 Payments, the automotive industry's leading credit card processor. 360 Payments makes payments simple, secure, and streamlined for auto shops through seamless integration with dozens of shop management software and DVI tools. 360 Payments offers solutions for in-person and remote payments, including text-to-pay, which lets your customer pay from their smartphone when it's convenient for them. Visit 360payments.com slash podcast to learn more. Brian and Tyson, the convenience of, of software aside, there are real necessary uh, conversations that you have to have. What is the process that you have as a uh, as a mentor, mentee? You know, um, you know, describe the relationship. Describe how things work. Well, I think that you know, number one, I think we've become friends. Um, so I think that those conversations have have grown easier. Um, you know, I, I I consider Tyson my my little brother uh, that I never had. So. Um, to me, that's, you know, he's my friend and I care about not only him, uh, his wife and his kids. Um, I want to see him successful. I don't want to see him make the same mistakes that I did because uh, I know how costly they can be. You know, I want to avoid those kind of pains that, you know, I don't want to see him go through those things. So, you know, opening up those conversations, having those conversations, being able to talk about those things, employees and hardships and situations that, that are difficult. You know, 
we, he and I are pretty open. Uh, you know, we pull the Band-Aid right off and we kind of tear into things. I mean, we don't hesitate to, hey, I'm having this problem. How should I handle it? What should I do? Let's, you know, let's just get to the brass tacks and let's go for it. So um, they, we don't mince a whole bunch of words usually. I mean, yes, there's formalities and there's niceties and things, sure. Uh, but, you know, when he has a problem or a situation or I have a situation or I just want to talk, sometimes, you know, I, last year has been difficult for a lot of us. And, uh, you know, sometimes I just need a friend to talk to and he's been there for me as well as I've been there for him. Is that the process that one of you will call the other one and start the conversation? Is there a regular um a regularly scheduled meeting that you have uh, what's the process for for sharing that information and and kind of getting the details when we are composite partners uh we in the group we call each other we set a schedule like every thursday we talk mm -hmm. um and after that we still kind of kept so it's, it's about you know once a month ever we text each other back and forth if i need something i'll usually text him and ask him if he's got a second to talk and then he'll usually text me to call him and so it's usually how it goes we always try to stay in touch and um never let too much time go by without touching base and um but yeah it's more of a you know yeah, it's, it's like a... It's know, an as-needed basis friend. now kind of thing? It's, it, it's on an yeah, as-needed but... basis, but, you know, sometimes yeah, we just reach just... out and say, hey, I won't just want to say hello. You know, it's it's yeah. just like friends do. Mm -hmm. And how long has your, uh, how long has your, uh, your relationship been? Probably close to 10 years, Seven. huh? Yeah, so... So, yeah. So you've learned everything you need to learn from Brian now, right? There's uh, there's no, really nothing not that yet. he's adding to the conversation. Is that not no. correct? Yeah. Well, the day you stop Brian, learning Brian, is Brian the is day they put you in the ground. He's a well of knowledge. Brian is a very, very deep well of knowledge. Well, Aren't Vic, you? that's your relationship with all of your uh, all of your partners, right? With uh, uh, it, as far as it, as far as what. <laughs> being a deep well of knowledge, I don't being think that so. deep well of knowledge. Right? <laughs> well, well, I think being available and uh, yeah. and offering this help as as they need it. It's peace of mind. You know, you have someone to reach out to, and that you know, Brian and I were composite partners, and that's how we got established was in the group. And gosh, it's been almost fifteen years, Brian, since we met, met each other. And mm -hmm. there is a very deep relationship that comes out of a shop owner that reaches out to another shop owner and says, I've got a, got a challenge, can you help me through it? And could we both walk through it? Like when I sold my shop, I called Brian. He was the first one and I, I said, Brian, I'm thinking about selling it, what would you think? And how much would, what should I sell it for? And he walked me through the, the logic of it. He gave it a, a different perspective. And I, that's what I love about a shop owner is one who wants to give like Brian and Tyson who wants to learn. There's many of them out there. It takes that, that mechanism to establish, like you guys have had, like we've had. And it just takes time being vulnerable with one another, being vulnerable and saying, hey, I don't have all the answers. And when we were Tyson's age and Brian and I met, we had all the answers, yet we were both in a group struggling, right, Brian? Absolutely. Yeah. And Brian, you mentioned you don't want Tyson to make some of the same mistakes you've made. Well, let's look right. behind the curtain. What are some of those mistakes that you made? Well, I think the the biggest thing that I can think of off the top of my head is is not knowing the financial reports of a business. You know, not understanding cash flow and those type things. And now, you know, I understand them so well; it's painful. Uh, and so. I don't want somebody to not understand that um, because that is the lifeblood of your business. 
and uh, mm -hmm. just the fact that you know I had no idea what half those reports in, in QuickBooks were and you know now I can walk you through pretty much anything you want to know and I think that that is probably the single biggest thing is just plain simply understanding in the inputs, understanding the financial reports, you know, good information in, good information out, being able to get that information and, and pass that along. Um, and uh, so that people don't make the same financial mistakes, you know, just because you got $10,000 in your bank account doesn't mean you can spend it. Um, you know, there are bills and things that come in and ebb and flow, and you just, it's just not that simple. <clears throat> Have the ability to understand these reports and understand those things. You can't manage it. And I think that's the biggest thing is you got to have the information to be able to manage it. You got to have facts, and black and white, hard numbers or facts, and you can manage them then. Tyson, as an introvert who was very comfortable working by yourself in the back of the shop under a car, how challenging has it been to come out and be that uh, be that guy out front? It's been challenging. Um, you know, having your when you do mailers or other you know promotional pieces and you're on it and stuff, it's really awkward to see yourself for a while or hear yourself on the radio mm -hmm. but um you get used to it i guess it's not too bad you know um, a face in the community right yeah yeah a lot of people will say hi to you and i may not know them off the top of my head but um they recognize you from your advertisements and your you know just being part of the community and so it's definitely been a change you know from when you started tyson to where you are now you know how have things hopefully improved and brian you're in the same kind of the same way yours so when we um originally started and i took over the shop we had a average ro um, of about $250. Um, and our parts margin was about 45%. Um, and so that was one of the first things, you know, we worked on and tackled was improving, um, getting our margins where they needed to be. And, so now, you know, we got our parts marching at 50% and our, um, we're charging the right, right amount now for the job. Um, sometimes it's easy to be scared to increase your labor rate or to make a big change. And so, you know, it's nice to have like Brian to talk to and, um, Sometimes it's just good to have some, you know, get some validation that, you know, your decision is the right one. And um, another thing that's changed is like when we first started out, we had a lot of cash flow issues. Um, we would let our, we did too much work on accounts, you know, receivables and um, fleets didn't do a good job of collecting and so there'd be times where you know money would just be really tight i mean um now we don't have that issue and we've been able to save and um that's one thing brian told me from the get-go is to um every week put a thousand dollars into a savings account just right off the top don't touch it unless you absolutely have to. And um, over the years, it's grown and been a good, you know, safety net for us. So um, that's some of the things, you know, we talked about. 
Brian, how about you? I think that uh, the process has, has been uh, the biggest thing for me, um, you know, seeing, you know, how other shops like Tyson's, how their process works and how they work and, and learning from him, uh, his values, his morals, his scruples, things like that, and how I can impact my own business by doing that. Uh, you know, I've learned a lot from him that way. Um, you know, of course, he runs his business different than I do. Um, uh, our business is, is primarily fleets. Um, and uh, so, you know, we are stuck in that accounts receivable situation a little bit heavier than what he is. Luckily for me, I've been doing it a lot longer than he has. And, you know, so we have, we have, you know, that cash reserve that we can fall back on if we have to while we're waiting for people to pay. But even that has gotten better. Uh, you know, we've communicated with, with fleets and said, hey, you know, you need to pay us on completion and so on. And, and it's just gotten a lot better that way. So times have changed. People are, you know, are, are understanding our situation. But I think the process, a lot of the processes that, that Tyson had, uh, and were things that I wanted to Im implement in my own business, um, a as well as I think that he saw some things in my business that he, he liked and, and wanted to apply as well. And, and, uh, I think those are probably the single biggest things for me was just that. When you mentioned that uncomfortable word accountability, mm. it's not just you holding him accountable. It's him holding you accountable as well, right? Mm -hmm. Ab absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we, when we talk, you know, I ask him how he's doing, how his business is doing. He asks me about my business, you know, how we're doing. Are we making money? Are you making money? You know, are, you know, how are you handling the, you know, the last year? You know, are, you know, are you getting everything out of every invoice, every customer? Uh, are you doing your inspections, things like that? You know, we ask each other those questions and, you know, it's like, you know, if either of us admit that, hey, we don't do this, then it's, you know, then we kind of, you know, I wouldn't say we reprimand each other, but we don't, you know, we don't mince words either. So, you know, we, 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 we trust each other and we expect each other to, to be honest with each other. So. Yeah, honestly, that's the word I was going to bring up, Vic. It's it's huge that you honest with yourself and with your partner. Oh, totally. Yeah, I totally agree. This, this relationship doesn't work unless it's you know it, it, unless you're honest with each other. And the most important thing is honesty yourself. How many shop owners lie to themselves that they're successful? You know, Brian and I talked about it. You know, it goes back to the legend in your own mind. Yep. Yeah. Tyson, have you found you've had to open up your honesty level there to be, you know, uh, was that really not a challenge? It wasn't too much of a challenge. Once I get to know someone in, like, one-on-one uh, -on -one situations, I open up a lot more and become, you know, pretty, pretty much an open book, mm -hmm. tell you anything. I think one of the fears that people have about being honest with someone else is that they think they're going to be, they're going to think differently of them, that they're going to think less of them. But to me, when someone's honest with me about what's going on, one, I, I realize I can help them. And two, it's like, I'm, I admire it because they're open about their challenges. And I, and this is what I love about seeing these kind of relationship with these guys is you have the wise old owl. Sorry, Brian, you got a little more gray hair now than you had years ago. But the wise old owl helping the younger guy, but in the same token, the younger guy is helping the older guy. It's kind of a, it, it's a given, they're very symbiotic. You get as much out of it and really more than you, you give as a mentor. And the mentee feels, and sometimes, Tyson, you probably agree with this, sometimes the mentee feels like he's taking all the time, but he's really not. It's a very complimentary relationship. And and so I'm gonna go kind of go over and wrap this up and in 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 
the lessons learned component of it, look for a coach or a mentor. So these are the key points that you guys brought out. Listen, be teachable, be vulnerable, learn leadership, but in that learn communication, be prepared to change, change personally, as a business, and be ready to change personnel inside your business. Doesn't mean you have to, you just have to be ready. You might have questions, but someone out there, a coach or a mentor, will help you on your journey. They will help you shorten the, ter- the journey. They'll help you avoid the potholes, a lot like Tyson and Brian have with one another. Yeah, great points. This episode has been brought to us by 360 Payments, the automotive industry's leading credit card processor. 360 Payments makes payments simple, secure, and streamlined for auto shops through seamless integration with dozens of shop management software and DVI tools. 360 Payments offers solutions for in-person and remote payments, including text-to-pay, which lets your customer pay from their smartphone when it's convenient for them. Visit 360payments.com slash podcast to learn more. And we'd like to thank Mm. our guests, uh, Brian Rex from Fleet Services in Everett, Washington, and Tyson Anderson from Master Mechanic of Providence, Utah, for joining us today. We don't necessarily want to change our past, but we can use our past Mm -hmm. to help improve someone else's future. Mm -hmm. Guys, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll talk to you again with Shop Owner Solutions very soon.